Hello everyone, welcome to the next session of um, uh, drawing uh, in, per in perspective and for design and architecture. Uh, the new series of uh, videos of, I, of mine and um, uh, today we're going to still do a little bit different forms but still in two vanishing point perspective just to explain you a little bit how to draw certain things and the next one's going to be rather much more with a true action point perspective of both. So um, let's start. I'm going to share the screen with you. So you see, this time we have a little bit different forms, yes? Um, if you analyze them before, before drawing them, we just kind of go to the analytic, uh, you know, of this of these forms. So look, this this part over there yeah they basically have all of the squares we usually had for the previous videos yes and again you have similar if you just follow the straight line here and this this line here you will have another one going that way and you're going to have in perspective approximately this less or more yeah a little bit better so you have what we have we have two prisms yes which has from the top rectangle uh, uh, square uh, forms and this one is what is it is half of each yes yeah two squares each of them yeah so you have like you know it's very easy to actually find out the proportions and here of course the length would be yeah so you have one two square one square and two square and in between you have this form and after you of course gonna gonna take it off the front and take it off on the back and after gonna part cut a 45 degree angles of each each square so let's just start drawing this <clears throat> so let's go so as I said previously, we're going to first choose the arm of the perspective. So first we're going to draw approximately as we have the view here. Yeah, and bef before we go any further, I just want to explain you something. When you take a picture of this kind of forms, yes? Um, and if, if it happens that you really uh, draw from the pictures, so make sure to always correct your verticals, yeah? Because you see, they are not perfectly vertical here. Yeah, that's close here for example, but the outside part over there, you see, look, it's not vertical. And the same is here, it's not vertical. That's the camera. If, 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 if you just approach too much, too close to the object, the lenses, it, it might be, most picture are gonna be kind of deformated, the verticals. So it, 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 if you know that you draw in two by one perspective, you have to adjust them to the verticals. Everything needs to be vertical because in two vanishing point perspective, the verticals are vertical and parallel to each other. So let's start drawing. So as we said, arm of the perspective, one is there and another is there, yes? And I have, let's say the corner, this time I have the corner in the middle. So I'm gonna put a little here, a little there and then just around all the drawing all together. So let's go. So I do first, as usually, the two vanishing point kind of greed, yeah? Okay, so gently, you know, you do gently. I'm gonna do a little bit stronger. So you do one, let's say a little bit convergence to the light, not, not, do not exaggerate with the perspective in order to have kind of, you know, a normal, you know, perspective, two vanishing point. So also a little bit kind of conversions to the left, but a little bit less evident. And if you like, you can start actually with the middle part. Why? Because it's square, yes? And it's always easier. And it's in the middle between those two prisms, uh, okay? Um, uh, uh, with the kind of two squares um, in proportion, tops and, and, and the base. So for example, if you would start, for example, here, yeah? And maybe this is going to be too large. We're going to do a little bit smaller. So let's just let's do just approximately. That's my. You see, look, in front what I have right away, I have square. Yeah. So now I know that I just go that way. Yeah. I I go that way. Of course, I could actually count the squares on the top. How many of them going to be? It's going to be how many? Four. Yes, because you have two 
two times square square prism. So let's go. So if I would like to have four, so I can, of course, establish the first one, which is going to be just a second. Let me do just maybe a cleaner line like this. Yeah, so you have another over there, yeah? So, of course, you have second, you have the third, and you have the fourth, approximately, because if you want to do it perfect, you know what to do. So now it's half, half, yes? So now what? We have the second prism, it starts here, yeah? And it, if you extend the side, of course, it's gonna go, it's gonna go this way, yes? So we have what? One square is half, another square. Left. Somewhere there you have the side of it, yeah? And the, in the perspective of it is going to be, if you have here this convergence, so the side can go approximately here. And what you have to cut, you have to cut the, this part, isn't it? Yes? To subtract this out. Yes? So, and if you extend the line over there, what are you going to have? You're going to have the same over there. So, as you also go with this line over here, you're going to have what? One half approximately. Anyway, you can go with the squares here also. Yeah? How's it going to go? So somewhere there, you're going to have the end, yes? And with convergence there. So you have another block over there, which you cut where? From this, this point to this point, you cut off, yes? You cut off, okay? So <clears throat> let me just uh, uh, make this object entirely as it is with a little bit stronger lines, yeah? kind of pre-sketching lines. You know that they, they should be very, very gentle drawings, yeah? So we have one form here, yeah? So we have like that. Another form gonna go there, this way, yes? Okay, and another will go, of course, this way, yeah? Over here and over there. The lines have to be straight, so, you know, when you do manually, it's a little bit maybe, especially on vacuum, it's not like it's, it's, it's perfect a line, but anyway, it's kind of close. So, um, so anyway, it's somewhere there, you see? So now, if I would erase uh, the construction, you know, lines, yeah, a little bit here and there, what I would get, I would get the form as is approximately in the picture, yes? Okay. So, uh, of course, if I add a little bit, a little bit shadow on this side, it's going to be much more dimensional look like. Yes, and you can gently add some kind of shading here and maybe something over there to just get better look of it, yes? And now what do we have? We have, of course, um, we're going to do some additions. So one cylinder smaller and one kind of like double of this one, yes? So, and of course, this, those cylinders are approximately like they would, they would be done from the cube almost it just kind of gently a little bit, I think, by the little bit minimally longer than the cube uh, part. So anyway, what I am talking about, if you would draw the cube, for example, in, in perspective, two vanishing point perspective, like that, approximately, yeah? Okay, vertical, vertical, and vertical here, yes? So you have another uh, square surface, and you have the cube, I'm oh, sorry, a little bit better. The cube a little bit uh, kind of like completed, yeah, from here and there. So, if you would like to really circumscribe the cylinder there, yeah, so it would be what horizontal ellipse here, yeah, on the top. You go verticals, oops, a little bit closer to the edge, vertical here, and vertical over there, and you have what another, yeah, a little bit larger, a little bit much more rounded this time because you're looking lower. And the cylinder so you have to kind of review my videos about cylinders to have uh, to know what i'm talking about um because i don't want to repeat this necessarily um uh, i assume that you should know when you practice this drawing you should know already my pre pre first videos about the perspective about the cylinder circles uh, and and so on and in perspective of course so you see this part i will simply put it here and where is it? Look, it's like in the middle of both squares, yeah? Okay? So, for example, on this line, if I'm going to introduce this kind of 
cylinder, yeah? So it's going to be somehow, somehow close to the middle of, uh, kind of in the middle of the, the, the entire kind of, you know, part, of, uh, the, the square part, this one, the rectangular part, yes? So you have that, of course, you know that approximately one square, so it's going to be the top is over here. The other, of course, is in the middle of this part, yeah? So you just do it a little bit smaller because far is farther, yeah? And you go with the height, you go with the height, yeah, approximately, a little bit narrower, slowly narrower, yeah? Something like this. So you know that it's going to be approximately, this is approximately square, and another is over there, it's going to be very, very narrow on the top because as you can see, as you can see here, yeah? This part is shorter than this one, you see it? And, it, and, and the reason for this is because, for example, your eye is here, yeah? You're looking at this, at this top of the cylinder from that point. And after you're gonna look and the other over there. So it's normal that you're gonna see much more because this is lower, so you see much more or ellipse, elliptic form here then elliptic form over here. Yeah, so that's the rules of perspective. Yes, so you, you the, the kind of, you know, the eye is not moving, it's just simply uh, uh, looking, it's just simply looking, uh, you know, and the surfaces from different angles. That's why you have one very narrow, one very, 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 you know, um, and very large. So all this ellipse is going lower, like for example, in this case, you have this, but then you have that, you see, is significantly larger. And why? Again, the same principle. You have another one angle you have here, but you have another angle, of course, in vertical, vertical, vertical space larger than here because your eye is here, yeah? So that this kind of, you know, analysis of when you draw forms, you should do so you really very well understand what you're actually doing. Yeah, so we're not kind of like going, you know, approximately, but it needs to be certain, certain logic in it. So, um, uh, so for example, here I will kind of a little bit clean this now. Yeah, so I have one cylinder here, another cylinder here. So you have approximately the object. Yes, of course, as you know, when the light is coming like that, so approximately on this larger part over here, it start forming the or actually, uh, sorry, the, the kind of, um, you know, uh, core shadow and the same over there. So on this line start, so you're going to have kind of, you know, this first little bit here, a little bit there, but you're going to have this kind of forms. Of course, they're going to also project if there the angle of the light is this way and this way. So you're going to have a little bit also shading on the, on the, on this form, as you can see here. Yeah. And you can see a little bit here of the shadow. So, so you're gonna have also a little bit something here, yeah? So for example, <clears throat> let's just do this a little bit kind of uh, nicer. We'll try to do a little bit nicer. So as in previous videos, I just I kind of make it fade this little bit. And here I'm gonna take, for example, uh, some dark color reds to go something around this kind of color. So of course we go. So now you can start from anything you want, yeah? Even from the cylinders if you like, yeah? So we can kind of go and try to make them you know, uh, look approximately a little bit, little bit kind of cleaner look of the contours, uh, which would allow you first to do the kind of very light contours. Just a second, it's kind of tricky on the tablet to do this kind of one gesture, ellipses. Um, uh, yeah, but anyway, that's 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 fun. I like to have. I always like to travel in drawing. Uh, because that's challenging. You should always look for those as well. Always for challenge yourself, not try to kind of go, you know, for, for facilities, because facilities that everybody can learn, but, uh, but, but kind of a little bit something much more complex, that's difficult. So you should always welcome difficulties because that's something which actually makes you progress in your learning and not holds you kind of, you know, and, and always in the same place. So, yeah, so just kind of go and try to kind of get these connections less or more, yeah. 
know, in perspective. Yeah, and you do another part of a dance or just kind of one gesture. If it's not happened on, from the first stroke, you, you practice because more you practice, of course, on the paper, you is going to be faster than on this kind of digital surfaces for the reason I already explained it earlier uh, in the other videos. But anyway, that's always the, the case. So you just kind of go adjust the corners, yeah. And if you kind of going, uh, some lines you see go over, yeah. It's no big deal. Yeah? It's not going to be. It's not a kind of problematic. You just have to kind of and follow just the perspective, yeah. So if you kind of have the line a little bit longer than you know the the, the form is, yeah. So of course you cut the form when you should, but if there's a little bit extension here and there. It's not really kind of bother in, in design actually and, and in the architecture right, kind of interior design and so this kind of you know uh, extensions um not really bother and the kind of character of the of the design of the design drawing so um well so we have that for example and let's just simply if i close this of course i can clean this to have nicer but it's not my intention i'm just going to kind of you know just go a little bit stronger on the base because that's where the shading the, the contour is going to be much more darker the edges yeah some of that okay and the same here on the lower part you have much more you know evident this line but you should try to do this especially when you draw on digital surfaces try to do this as straight as possible without using any tools of course yeah so and uh, here you have a little bit dark area and because there are spaces between so you can kind of emphasize the darkness you can adjust a little bit the corner over there and as you have this of course the same you can do with the with the with the with the, with the cylinders yeah so that what could be a little bit darker over there because it's going to be kind of in shade shadow yeah so you can kind of go and even a little bit kind of shading over there yeah, on the top, you leave a little bit white edge and just put it a little bit something. And of course, over there, you kind of, sorry, you can start off gently, but then you go kind of a little bit darker and again, spread it away, yeah? You can even add one line here for kind of, you see, dimensionality, better dimensionality, but thinner, yeah? So if you do kind of thinner right on, the, on this edge and there, so you're gonna get kind of nice kind of effects of dimensionality of the cylinder yeah so you can kind of go and make it stronger with the core shadow and disperse a little bit here yeah and the same here disperse a little bit this this darkness this contrast and of course as the light goes that way so you might have some kind of lines over here for example yeah because you have some kind of what shade projected and the same is happening there yeah and there so you might have some some kind of you see uh, shading projected over there yeah on the base and of course the sides over here you can go and make it a little bit shadow if you have this kind of light so probably this gonna in the angle somewhere there you're gonna have a little shadow projected of this side of the object yeah so you can kind of push it a little bit here push it a bit there and you can kind of you can do kind of cross hatching there to make this shadows much more nicer yeah this is much more darker here yeah the other is going to be not as dark, yes. And of course, here you can add a little bit line there, lighter, and just kind of when you put this and spread it, just kind of in the same here. So you just kind of simply dissociate the objects uh, forms, yeah, and uh, much more kind of significantly. Okay, so well, we have approximately this kind of four, yes. Uh, <clears throat> so. Um, I'm going to move the drawing a little bit lower. And now we're going to try to imagine ourselves. Yeah, we're going to try to imagine ourselves the same object. So now we're going to treat the actually the drawing. Now we're going to treat the drawing as um, as just reference. Yes, so we don't going to kind of, you know, um, uh, do the same sketch or something no we're going to imagine this now differently so we can start with this longer part yes and we're going to do this for example if you have you can imagine this vertical so look now um you can put it for example on the base yeah so you have arm perspective going this way 
and you have the front, let's say, over there. And now it normally would go that way. Yeah, conversions to the right is here and to the left is here. Yeah, and that's to the right. So now, so first I'm going to do this, this prism. Yeah, we just compose from two squares and two squares, four squares all together. So one, uh, if I just kind of approximately estimate, of, co of course, in order to help yourself, you can kind of do right away, kind of, you see, converging, converging to the left, yeah, um, uh, lines, okay? And over here as well, yeah, so you're gonna kind of converge a little bit to the right, yeah, gently, not very strong, but just gently converging a little bit to the right. So you can right away, you have four, so you know that you did, and here's side of one square, yeah, okay? This side over there. Okay, so you have approximately what the prism you have done, which is on the prism, which here the object has in the middle. And now, of course, you're going to add to that direction one and let's say two somewhere there and one square. And you're going to now prolong this line to the, to the left, yeah, because you're converging to the right. And you're going to do what? Approximately here, another square. Yes? What for is the square? Because now you're going to, we, I imagine myself looking at the object from this direction when the object is standing on this base. Yeah? So you always choose yourself what you want to do. You can turn this any way you like, but I turn it that way. So I now, now I know that the top of this, the top is somewhere there. Yeah? Is there. Now I go with the conversions, of course, here. And I'm going to have the front of this kind of square part. I'm sorry, a little bit better. I'm going to have some kind of the front of the square part, yeah, over there, yeah. And the square is going to be actually a bit kind of, is here on the corner. I, I, drew, I just have to correct that. Okay, so let's just correct this part briefly, yeah. So that's the actually the corner, yeah. So as I found the corner, you have to be very kind of precise when you want to have good effects. Uh, a good forms because if you kind of miss a little bit attention here and there it might come something completely different so of course over here normally you would have this yeah and you will have the top of it and you have this uh, square and you have this side so from this side uh, from the side i would see this like this from the front like that like this and like this and of course this part added to it yeah it's going to be like that and like this and what's going to happen then you see that's the base but we don't see as you can see this is the base and that the triangle front so what is happening i have triangle 45 degree yes yeah so that's actually my form you can take it away now this lines yeah okay because you don't going to need them you need only the base. And now, now to the base, of course, you go. The angles are parallel in two vanishing point perspective. So we just kind of go there and you have the same angle approximately in there. And another what is happening, look, this base is correct. And here is, uh, sorry, the top is correct. Yeah, that is correct. This is correct, this is good. What is happening here, you have cut 45 degree, yeah, over there, yeah? So you see this cut, yeah? Because you can imagine this form is tending that way, yeah? You have this, yeah, today is this form, today is this form, and you have, of course, the thickness and so on. Anyway, so, <clears throat> so you see, uh, imagining, Im imagining this kind of things is great practice for your perspective. You can really check what you really understand from it. So now, of course, the longer I have here, now you remember, major is this, yeah? Major is this, just a second, a little bit better. Oops, sorry. A little bit better, okay, like that. And you have what? Middle is somewhere there, yeah? And another middle is somewhere there. So look, it major is going this direction, minor is perpendicular going there. Yeah, so what's going to happen? You have this kind of ellipse and you keep the ellipse as large as the square would be. 
What I mean, you have a square and that your ellipse to keep, yeah? So, uh, oops, sorry. Uh, so I have this ellipse, yeah, ready. And I do another one. So is it gonna be kind of almost similar, yeah? A little bit different angle here, you see? I have different angle here and different there because this is lower. So it gets much more angular that way and closer to the horizontal line, you're gonna have much more vertical angles. Okay, so now I go with a semi, seemingly similar, you know, um, ellipse. And now, of course, you go with the sides of this ellipse, yeah? So you go this way and that go this way. And from here, it, it goes approximately this way. And from here, it goes approximately somewhere this way. So now, which is longer? The longer is the upper one. So here you have that. So you have approximately the other ellipse, a little bit, oops, sorry, a little bit better. The other ellipse approximately like, you know, one cube or something, so somewhere there. And the other, of course, you're gonna have like one approximately and two. So somewhere there, you're gonna have this angle, of course, of the ellipse over here, yeah? Okay, so we did the object. So if you would like to kind of now make it, for example, uh, no, I'm going to do this here, okay? I'm going to make it, again, black lines on top to just kind of uh, see this much more better. So, yeah, so if you go to this, for example, I will go, of course, vertical. Oops, sorry, I'm going to change the color. Yeah, so if you go with the color, for example, so you have vertically kind of going this way, yeah? You have this kind of angle. Yeah, uh, actually from the lower, from down up, it's going to be much more nicer stroke line if you can make it. Of course, on the paper is not problem, but me, I rather do from that direction because it's much more easier, yeah, over there. And you have, of course, that the perspective. Here you have the perspective going to the right. And here, of course, you have some parts of this, of the prism behind visible a little bit, yeah, over there. And you have also some, of course, part of this other, um, you know, uh, triangular form visible behind the ellipse, uh, be, be, be behind the cylinder. And of course, we have this, this kind of corners here. And we have this kind of corners, oh, sorry, this kind of corners a little bit this way and the other, and the, and the other way, yeah, some there. Okay, and then you have conversions here, you have conversions to the right, oops, sorry converge to the right and this is approximately it ah so we just kind of finish the cylinder a little bit yeah with the kind of you know elliptic rounded corners and from here you go oops you go a little bit kind of like you know try to get the stroke straight kind of edge is tricky but anyway i love to try you know even if sometimes i have to try a few times but that's only you know uh in, in Cintiq, it's much more easier because you, you really see on the paper how it is. And in Cintiq, you can turn, yeah, one way or the other. Here also, I can turn. The only thing is that if I'm going to kind of move this, and if you're using the picture to draw, uh, you might kind of, uh, time to time, might not see the picture. So I don't want to do that. I'd rather keep the picture always on so you can practice what I am doing here, looking at the picture at the same time so we can kind of get this and uh, drawing less or more correctly yeah so i have to do kind of uh, all kind of aerobics here but anyway it's just for the explanation how to, you should actually work in it so if i take this out you see so we can kind of really put some kind of shading in there yeah okay of course all this stuff going to be a little bit in shading so we can apply some kind of shading also on the triangles kind of yeah on this kind of forms, you know, here and there. And of course, you're gonna have some kind of, you see also in shadow of these parts. And what's gonna happen here, of course, you're gonna have in order from the lower part, somewhere from there, you will have, you know, a little bit the core shadows, core shadows, a little bit lower and dispersing, yeah, over there, over there. I'm sorry. So you will have kind of, you see, a little bit, oops, sorry, a little bit stronger. The angles uh, from which I am drawing, I am really doing here aerobic. <laughs> I'm still, I'm still tablet because 
anyway um yeah so it's going this way and this way yeah that's normal of course you can uh, put much more elaborate in this in this four shadows yeah with the cross hatching and everything so as uh, as in previous drawings you can you can work out a little bit much more nicer and in this kind of situations uh, what's going to happen of course you're going to have under those cylinders also what kind of darker parts yeah because they're also going to project you see the, if the line is going over this angle so also at the same time over here you're going to have a little bit kind of you know projected darker shadow under yeah so anyway with the shadows is kind of fun uh, to kind of do them after you can emphasize certain forms a bit stronger here a bit stronger you see some some parts over here over there and on the on the base of course here on the base over there so and you have approximately you know this drawing done we can divide the forms of course because they are kind of they have different colors and so and they kind of divide it because they kind of connected together from you know uh, all kind of forms are connected together that way and the other of course there might be some kind of shadow after there but i would suggest to review of course my videos uh, about pro shadow projection so you will know that you're going to have some kind of you see that here and there kind of shading going you know, this way or the other so anyway that's that's another story it's not about shading it's about the perspective you know, drawing perspective this kind of forms so um uh so this was will be all of course in this session with this form so you take it and do it even more different angles turn around always differently but you know imagine this turn out okay you kind of put it different way and practice and uh, this form um, from one position of the picture you know how it looks you know the proportion is very easy to to do it so thank you very much and see you next time